In many cases, designers will illustrate a retaining wall in plan view by using some nominally chosen line thickness that may or may not represent the footprint of the wall, which includes the coping width and wall batter. Walls with a lean or batter take up more space at high sections than they do at lower sections, sometimes considerably more space, and one line thickness will not accurately represent this. Today we are going to demonstrate the AWOL CAD tool on a grading plan for a new condominium development. This drawing is an AutoCAD drawing, but the same procedures could be done on a PDF of the grading plan if it was underlaid into AutoCAD at the correct scale. The retaining wall on this site is designated in cyan. At the top of the drawing, or north, is a railway line. To protect the new condo development, a derailment berm has been designed running parallel to it. The rail line and the berm are the high side of the retaining wall. On the low side is the condo development. This wall is approximately 147 meters in length and is about 5 meters or 16.5 feet in height at the highest point. The AWOL toolbar contains eight icons and is set up in a chronological sequence. Icon 1 is the drawing setup. This dialog box allows the user to select either imperial or metric units. The user can select millimeters or meters for metric or inches or feet for imperial. For example, if meters is selected, one AutoCAD unit is equal to one meter and so on. The scale drop-down menu allows the user to set the size of the annotation or text being used. It does not affect the measurement of the wall in any way. In this example, the drawing is in meters and the annotation scale is 1 to 200. Keep in mind that any annotation can be modified or changed afterward. Once the drawing setup icon is initiated, AWOL automatically creates five new layers, each representing a different aspect of the new retaining wall drawing. The layers are Retaining Wall Baseline. This layer is the line you draw that is used to represent the front edge of the retaining wall coping unit at the top of the wall. Retaining Wall Batter. This layer represents the projected bottom of the wall where it intersects the lower grade. Retaining Wall Stations. This layer will be used to add the text that will identify the various stations and top of wall and bottom of wall grades along the length of the wall. Retaining Wall Top. This layer represents the back of the coping unit. Retaining wall. This layer represents the front edge of the retaining wall coping unit, which is a copy of the retaining wall baseline, just shown in a different color to match the retaining wall top layer, as they both represent the front and back of the coping unit. The retaining wall baseline layer is set to the current layer, again representing the proposed front edge of the retaining wall coping unit. In this example, you will note that the wall is represented by a one meter wide line. The gray line in the middle of the wall represents the front edge of the proposed wall. This representation is better than most, as it shows some batter or lean to the wall. However, you will note that the total wall width of one meter is consistent along the length regardless of the height, which is not accurate. With the current layer automatically set to retaining wall baseline, I will now trace the front edge of the wall at the top with a continuous polyline. The entire wall must be drawn as a continuous polyline. Start the polyline at the beginning of the wall as if you were standing in front of the wall and looking at it from left to right. Since the condominium is on the low side, the beginning of the wall will be at the west end, moving from left to right or west to east. The second icon just shows you the settings that you currently have selected. The third icon, called Stations, now allows you to input the grading information at various points or stations along the length of the wall. If a civil engineer or designer is creating a new retaining wall from scratch, these grades must be calculated. 
A wall requires the top of wall, or TW, and bottom of wall, or BW, grades along its length. The locations of the stations should be critical junctures, where either the top of wall or bottom of wall, or both, are changing, such as high and low points. Since A wall will be interpolating between these grades, make sure that all critical points are being accounted for. For input purposes, you do not initially need both TW and BW grades at each station, as sometimes the grading plan only provides one or the other. The exception to this is the first and last station, where both TW and BW grades are required. AWOL's interpolate command, which you will be shown shortly, allows the user to automatically fill in any missing grades, so that ultimately all stations will have both TW and BW grades, even if they have not been provided. For clarity, I will now freeze the existing layer the designer used to designate the one meter wide area representing the retaining wall. Now our magenta retaining wall baseline only remains. I will now input the stations. By selecting the stations icon, the retaining wall stations layer will be automatically set. A wall then prompts the user to select the retaining wall baseline, which is the magenta line that was just drawn. Now that the baseline is selected, we can start entering in the stations and grading information. To start, select the very beginning of the wall as our first station. I typically set my O-snap temporarily to endpoint to ensure that I am grabbing the very beginning of the wall baseline. The default O-snap setting is nearest to allow the user to select random stations along the retaining wall baseline easily. Enter both the top and bottom of wall grades Now continue on, entering either the TW or BW grades at various points, or both if they are available. If either the TW or BW grade is missing on the grading plan at a particular location, you simply hit return when prompted for that input. AWOL automatically inserts a placeholder variable called TBD, or to be determined. You can stop and start the station's command at any point. Once the stations are entered, the user may want to add in markers along the length of the wall to indicate the locations of corners or curves or other important elements. The main use of this function is so that when the VESPA MSE design software export file is created by AWOL, which will be demonstrated shortly, this information can be transferred to the VESPA software for the retaining wall design. For this example, I will enter in two markers to identify the outside 90 degree corners near the end of the wall. First, I select the marker icon, the fourth icon in the series. Similar to the way stations are entered, I select a location for the marker along the wall. The user is then prompted to enter marker text. This is a short label that will designate what the marker will represent. The marker text cannot have any spaces or punctuation. An example would be C1 to designate our first corner. Once the information is imported into the VESPA design software package, further descriptions can be added. For our second corner, we will name it C2. The next icon is the interpolate function. Using this function, we can clean up any stations that are missing either a TW or BW grade that are currently designated as to be determined. This is quickly and easily done by selecting the interp icon. The user is prompted with select P line. As before, the user selects the retaining wall baseline. The user is then prompted select grade on one side. 
identify the grade that you want to interpolate. It will have either the TW or BW grade missing and contain the placeholder TBD. Now select a station on one side of the subject station that contains a value that can be interpolated from. For example, if the subject station is missing the TW grade, Make sure you pick a station on one side of it that contains a real number for the TW grade. The user is then prompted, select grade on other side. Do the same thing and select a station on the other side of the subject grade that also contains a real number for the missing grade. If for example TW grade is not provided at the station immediately next to the subject station, go to the next available station that has a TW grade. The user is then prompted to select grade to be interpolated. Now select the grade and AWOL will automatically calculate the missing grade. Continue running the interpolate command until all stations have both TW and BW grades. The sixth icon is the retaining wall drawing function. A wall will now draw the actual footprint of the wall to accurately take into account the wall height, batter, and thickness. By selecting the draw function, the user is again prompted to select the baseline. Once the baseline is selected, the prompt reads pick batter side. The user selects either above or below the line depending on which is the low side of the wall. The batter side will be the front side of the wall that has a lean or batter to it. In our example, the low side is the condominium side. We will click below the wall as shown. The user is then prompted to enter wall width. The wall width would be the width of the wall coping unit. In this example, we are using a retaining wall block that is 0.3 meters or 1 foot wide. Since we are running in metric, I will enter 0.3. The user is then prompted to enter batter angle. This is the batter or lean of the wall in degrees. In this example, the batter of the wall is 8 degrees, which is typical. Hit enter and a wall draws the wall footprint. The bottom of wall is projected out from the top of wall line to account for the wall batter. As the wall height is constantly changing along its length, the bottom of wall projection varies accordingly. In this example, we can see that at the highest section of the wall, the original designer underestimated the required wall width. Our newly drawn bottom of wall extends beyond the 1 meter corridor originally allowed. Also, at the lowest sections of the wall, the original designer overestimated the wall width requirements. Both can lead to confusion and discrepancies on site, particularly as the civil plans would not have represented the true location of the wall. If desired, a wall can now generate an accurate elevation view of the wall, including an estimate of the total exposed face area of the wall. By selecting the EL or elevation icon, AWOL prompts the user to select a location for the elevation view to be placed. Once the elevation view is placed, click the screen again to place the text for the exposed face area of the wall. Keep in mind that with most retaining walls, wall embedment is required and may vary greatly depending on a number of factors. The face area shown may be substantially less than what will be required when accounting for this embedment. This additional embedment area of wall will be calculated once the AWOL export file is brought into the VESPA design software, where the wall designer can see it. Finally, to export the wall geometry, select the last icon which looks like a table. The user is then prompted to select the wall baseline once again. Automatically, the other AWOL layers are temporarily turned off to make it easier for the user to select their original baseline. A 
dialog box comes up that allows you to enter the name of the file. Note that the default name includes either metric or imperial in the title to designate the units you are working in so that the data is imported correctly.